Hey guys, what's up? It's Finish here, and normally I bring you guys strictly competitive Pokemon content, but today we are hyped. There's some Pokemon Sword and Shield news that we're going to be going into, so let's get into it right away. For those of you who don't know, there was a release earlier this morning at 9 a.m. my time, 6 a.m. West Coast time, and during the afternoon, depending on where you are in Europe, basically that the Crown Tundra would be released in the middle of October. I believe the release date in particular is in like the 22nd or 23rd of October, and that is a lot of reason to be excitement. There's a lot of good, some bad, and so many things to weigh into consideration there. So we're going to go ahead and go through all the information. Um, there was an amazing trailer put onto YouTube, and that trailer is going to give a lot of um, information. I'll be sure to leave a link to it in the description. I don't want to leave um, like a specific one, like one second, like kind of going over of it, if you will. If only because A, I don't want to get hit with copyright, and B, I feel like there are going to be a million other channels that go through the whole tutorial and everything that they went through one by one, and not all of it really applies to the base of my channel, but if you guys want to check that out, definitely do so. There's so many reasons to be excited. I mean, just the look of it, it kind of opened my eyes. It was such a nice thing to see, especially, you know, the morning of my birthday. Um, it's really a great birthday present from Game Freak and Nintendo and all that, so thank you so much to them. But anyway, we're going to go through. There are a lot of new Pokemon coming out. Um, some of them are completely new to us, such as Calyrex, Reggie Leaky, and Reggie... Drago. Now, I don't know anything about these Pokemon. In fact, I've really only heard of Calyrex before today, and I only heard of that a couple days back, but it looks like it's a Psychic Grass type. As for the other two, um, we're going to have to wait and see. Um, just some initial impressions based on what they look like. Um, Calyrex looks like my favorite of the three. It's got a really cool design. It almost looks like this tomato on its head that's um, a bit rotten because it's green, but hey, we'll have to wait and see. Um, I definitely like the look of it. As for um, Reggie Drago, I'm not sure if those are going to come out in the 23rd or what in terms of later, but it kind of looks like um, a shiny Mawile if it was shiny in a different kind of colorized way. And as for Ajiliki, um, it looks pretty badass, honestly. So yeah, it's going to be interesting, but we're going to get into things that we have a bit more knowledge of, more known entities, and those going to be returning Pokemon. I'm only going to be going through the fully evolved ones because A, that impacts kind of Pokemon in SSOU with other choose the most, and B, if I were to go through every single last Pokemon my thoughts on them, then we might be here for a couple days, because I could just ramble on and on like the old boomer Pokemon man I am. So yeah, um, we got Nidoqueen and Nidoking coming back, both are really cool. For those who don't know, competitively they have abilities like Sheer Force to make them devastatingly strong on the special side, and even some mixed attacking prowess. Also moves like Stealth Rock and Toxic Spikes gives them a great deal of utility, and the Poison plus Ground Typing not only leaves them immune to things like Volt Switch, but also able to resist Clutch Typings like Fighting and Fairy type as well, which makes them really practical additions to beat the OU, UU, RU metagame, whatever it might be they fall in. It's also great. We're also seeing um, Zubat and Golbat. I assume that means um, Crobat's going back as well. As you see here, yeah, Crobat's going back. It's really cool. I think it's going to rock Heavy Duty Boots quite nicely. It's very fast, and his options attack like Brave Bird, and um, utility options like Taunt, Super Fang, and Roost, as well as U-Turn to make it a pivot. While it might not be the most effective OU presence, especially with the abundance of Steel types, Electric types, etc., I, I think that it's going to be a good option in lower tiers as well. I'm really curious to see how it does with the option of Heavy Duty Boots this generation. There's also going to be Electric Buzz and Magmar, which probably mean Electivire and Magmortar, which are devastatingly strong attackers on both the physical and special end. I think they're probably more lower tier presences, especially in terms of Electivire, but like Mortar with Boots could be a cool option, and even are you or maybe even you due to the abundance of coverage it has and the fact that it's now no longer held back by its biggest weakness of entry hazards, but it does lose the item of slot choice. It's still relatively frail, and neither of them have the highest base speed, which holds them back. Actually, fun fact, Electabuzz and Magmar are actually quicker than Electivire and Magmortar. So yeah, that's fun as well. Um, as you see, the evolution is kind of being sprinkled down below. Um, next up, we have Aggron. Aggron is one of my favorite Pokemon, but I love it more with the Mega Evolution than I do Regular. But Regular Aggron is still super strong and is a very funny move pool. And while it's very frail on the special end, especially due to the abundance of weaknesses it has, such as water, biting, I could go on ground, you know, etc. Um, I, I could go on and on and on, but I, I think it's a really cool option. And I'm really curious to see how it does in maybe NU or PU. Same goes for Altaria. Um, again, these Pokemon without Mega Evolutions are kind of restricted, but they're still really cool. In my eyes, so it's gonna be interesting to see how they pan out. Just gotta pause for just a millisecond here, guys. One sec. All right, yeah, my bad. I just forgot to um, I forgot to loop my music. So now we're good here. But anyway, um, next up we have again Altaria Pokemon. It's probably held back by not having Mega Evolution. It's still cool, natural cure, dragon flying is always a fun typing, but it does share some weaknesses with a lot of other dragons, such as four times the ice that will hold it back. Especially when we get to some dragons that we're gonna be seeing later, and that's a bit of a foreshadowing for. Watch the Calm, one of my favorite Pokemon. In fact, the Pokemon that is in my uh, logo. So, yeah. Next up, we have Absol, which has always been a pretty cool Pokemon. Again, 
bit mega reliant, unfortunately it doesn't have that in its capacity I believe, but super strong, has a wide array of attacking options, I've always thought it was kind of badass, so yeah, then there's Walrein, which is just an adorable evolution line, it's feel being one of my favorites, Walrein, um, of course it's going to be more of a bulky presence, it has heavy duty boots to negate the stealth rock weakness from the ice typing as well, which is really cool, and uh, yeah, no, I'm looking forward to seeing this, maybe on some balance teams and lower tiers as well, Relic Plant is just kind of a durable stealth rocker with a ton of attack, the ability to nuke things with head smash, etc, so it's cool. And then we get to some really relevant, you know, the big boys in the picture here. We get Metagross, uh, we get Garchomp, uh, and then the Legendary Birds, so I'm just going to scroll down a second so you can see all them on your screen. Yeah, so as for Metagross, I think you'll probably see some usage in OU and UU. Um, without Pursuit in the metagame and without the Mega Evolution, it's a lot of things impacting it at once, but I think it, the, the power decreep might help it a little bit, but also it's strong, there's a ton of options, and i really curious to see how it settles, um, be it OU or probably UU, I think it'd be great. Garchomp, on the other hand, is a clear certified OU Pokemon. I mean, we've seen it generation after generation, it's found a way. Last generation, Carpet's way all the way up to an A-plus Pokemon at points in time. Generations prior, of course, it was also a complete Wrecking Ball, especially Generation 5. And in Generation 4, it actually got banned, and still is banned to this day, but yeah, no. Um, I wonder if you're going to use Sandvel, so it's not we're seeing so much of Powdown and Tyranitar in the metagame, but that might change with DLC, and also Rough Skin is just so clutch, so. Wait and see, but regardless, I mean, mixed attacking sets, be it with Life Orb, or physical attacking sets, Stealth Rock sets, Swords Dance sets, Scarf sets, Band sets, it can run anything, and with the abundance of moves it has, coupled with the fact that there's great stat spread, and amazing speed, and just so many things it could work well with, I'm really curious to see what Garchomp is, it's one of the Pokemon that really opens up the metagame wide, and makes it so that you can kind of adapt to the roles you needed to, which, in my eyes, is a picture of health, there's also a couple ice types we're getting, which come right after Garchomp, this is later, like, oh hey, we'll help you check it, at least, Cryagonal, and... Or, and then one of the legendary birds, Articuno, they're also going to get the new forms. I don't have full information on them yet, but definitely stay tuned for more on that. And speaking of staying tuned, guys, if this video hits over 125 likes, I know it's a pretty specific number, but that's a number I've had in my head for a bit, so why not? Over 125 likes, I'm going to do more speculation videos be it on a metagame Monday, which definitely check those out if you're not familiar with this new to the channel or in other capacities, because I feel like a lot of people are excited about the new games, and you know what, now that there's some official announcement out there, I'm excited as well, so we're going to go ahead and get into it on this channel if we get enough support, if people show some love for this video, and it's also my birthday, so be sure to leave a like for all of that, and comment, let me know your thoughts, I, I love, love, love hearing from all you guys, um, the community that we've built is something I'm super proud of, and it's something that I definitely don't want to let go of or compromise at all, I'd love to just have it continue to expand, meet so many new people, I feel like I'm making new friends every single day, and that's honestly something that I could look forward to when I wake up in the morning, you know. It's just great knowing I'm able to interact with you guys, so that's super cool. But anyway, getting back on topic here, there's also again Articuno, Zapdos, and Moltres. Zapdos, of course, being probably the best competitively and also my favorite of the three. It's going to be interesting to see these bad boys in action with heavy duty boots, kind of the new forms, and so on and so forth. Um, especially because who knows what moves we'll be getting. I'm really excited to see that. And other things to be excited about are the legendary dogs. The dog trio of Raikou, Entei, and Suicune. Um, Suicune probably being my favorite of the three as well, but I think that Raikou is some badass combines that Entei is super strong with Flyblitz or Sacred Fire and if his blend sets interesting. Then there are going to be a couple of legendaries that are probably going to be Uber, such as Lugia and O. Still going to be very good, especially with heavy duty boots now in um, Tact. It'll probably help expand the Uber series. It's going to be seeing a complete reformation due to the abundance of legendary Pokemon coming into play. So that'll be very interesting to see. And rounding out the um, legendaries from that generation, we'll also see Regirock, Regice, Registeel, Latias, Latios, Kyogre, Groudon, and Rayquaza. And I'm like, whoa, Finch, why are you speeding through all the best Pokemon in the game? And don't worry, I'm going to go through them one by one. Um, Regirock is a great, very durable um, Mono Rock type. Unfortunately, it doesn't see much usage in higher levels of competitive play. But with that said, it's still a really cool option. I've always liked its design. It kind of looks like sort of like half freaky, like half like scary, I guess you could say. And I've always kind of liked that element of legendary Pokemon. So yeah, Regice, um, similar deal, but more of a bulky Pokemon. And shout out to the people in my uh, Discord server, which by the way, check it out. Link will be in the description below. Who have always been making a meme of using Assault Vest Regice. I think it's pretty funny. And definitely kind of want to see how it'll settle with heavy duty boots or assault us maybe in lower tiers as well. Reggie Steel is probably the best of this very competitively. Great stealth rocker, could even use curse sets, has options like block, which kind of niche or stuff like that, I believe. Um, actually, maybe not block. Um, maybe I'm confusing it with a different steel type. But regardless of that, um, seismic toss, earthquake, you know, toxic thunder wave, curse, iron head, or you know, earthquake, ice punch, even. Maybe we'll see some fringe users, you know, you probably not though, more like you, you are you. And uh, yeah, no, um, and then we have two. Bad boys got access to Mystical Fire, Aura Sphere, etc. Latios and Latios. Latios. Um, without Pursuit, these Pokemon are now left untrapped. Pokemon are left to roam the OU metagame 
posting absolute terror left and right. Very few things will keep them in check with Lou Latios. Even Latios is going to be quite a good option. If not, no, you then absolutely one of the best Pokemon in UU like it was last generation, even without Z moves. Would be removal of Pursuit. These Pokemon are going to get so much better. I'm really excited to see how Latios shapes on OU metagame. It's going to be really fun, especially because I'm a black white player at heart and seeing Latios drop Dracos and black white OU is one of my favorite things. And now maybe be able to do that without as much um, keeping it in, in, in the way of it as um, other generations. Yeah, no, no Pursuit. That'll be cool. Um, Kyogre, Groudon, Rayquaza. I'm not going to go through them specifically as much as they're all Pokemon that are going to be Ubers, no matter what. But Rayquaza is obviously a unique, very strong Pokemon. And Groudon, Kyogre, kind of too. They're like, oh my god, oh, original OP Pokemon from like when I was growing up. So it's super cool to see. Then we have Uxie, Mesprit, and Azel. All really cool Pokemon from Generation 4, which is my first game in game. So I remember my first memories of catching these Pokemon. Super great. So it's great to see them reintroduced. Um, as for OU viability, is will probably be the only one and just as a suicide lead sets up rocks and some explosion. Mesprit definitely gonna have a lot of viability in lower tiers via the stealth rock setter, a calm minder, or a bit more of a, a scarf or a specs breaker. And then Uxie could be a bulky calm minder or a stealth rock setter, utility, you know, screen Pokemon in lower tiers as well. So yeah, then another duo of Ubers from Sinnoh, our beloved Sinnoh. We got Dialga and Polkia, um, both ridiculously strong. Great move pools. I mean, I can't go, I can't say enough about how strong and amazing Dialga and Pulky are. So yeah, and then Heatran, the savior of SSOU, perhaps in here finally to keep things like Toxic in check with Magmus Germ sets. The Fable finally gonna be kept in check. I mean, you can go through it down the list. Everything is needed. Volcarona without hidden power ground. Thank God. Heatran, long awaited. Please come back. We're we're waiting for you with open arms, even if you're a, a lava filled piece of crap. Um, yeah, no, I don't mind getting Brent for that. Um, Next up, we have Giratina, Cresselia, Tornadus, um, Thunderous. Yeah, pretty much all Legendaries are going down the list at this point, but that is completely fine by me, of course. We've been doing that for a while now. Um, Giratina is, again, going to be an Uber, but it's going to be really cool. Cresselia, going to be a great wall in lower tiers. Tornadus, Thunderous, Landorus. I imagine they all start at OU. Landorus, Incarnate, probably going to be the only form of either of the three of this band. Actually, I lied. Um, Tornadus, Therian, Micah, Bandu. For generator plus have to do the boost with nasty blocks be really good. Actually, Tornadus got nasty stuff that's worth noting. But Landry's T, Thunderous I, Thunderous T, and Tornadus I all gonna be very welcome additions. And Tornadus T will have to wait and see. But yeah, no, um, great Pokemon. Tornadus T with her generators OP. Tornadus I with Geo Force is ridiculously strong, probably OP as well. But Landry's T with Intimidate, both Thunderous forms, and Tornadus I very cool Pokemon. I love exploring with all three of them, so that'll be interesting. And then we have Pokemon that clear cut Ubers like Xerneas and Veltal. I mean, you can't really. Especially Xerneas with the geometry, it's like, oh my god, get out of here. So yeah, Xerneas is one of the strongest, if not the strongest Pokemon in the game, besides Mega Rayquaza. Yveltal is also devastatingly strong, and also just super practical Pokemon with heavy duty boots. Now, could be a great pivot as well on Ubers. Um, Zygarde, gonna be interesting to see how that pans out. If we just like, oh, you Ubers, or Ubers last generation eventually. But, I mean, we'll have to wait and see. The signature moves, Thousand Arrows, is just so good, and there's a ton of utility moves, but maybe this generation will be nicer to it. I don't know, if we'll wait and see, though. Then there's Coco, Lele, Bulu, and Finny, the Tapu um, quad of Pokemon. Coco will be very interesting, probably could even be broken with the addition of Rising Voltage. Same goes for Lele and Expanding Forest. Ooh, whoever got uh, Grassy Glide, Finny didn't really get much at all, and honestly. So yeah, I think um, there's kind of two tiers. It's Tapu Coco, Tapu Lele, like way ahead of the game. Then like in the front of the next tier is Bulu, and then well behind that is Finny, I guess. Maybe like three tiers then, honestly. But yeah, no, we'll have to wait and see. I think Finny also will be very viable. Due to having Defog, you know, drain, although it's Defog in some terrain, right? Not really, but yeah, no, it's still at these Poke Jits. Combine Drain and Kiss Dread Power Sets, I guess. Um, Bulu is going to be strong. I don't know if it's really going to love Grassy Glide as much as someone would imagine, but it's going to be good. It's going to give competition a real boom. I don't know which will be better. Give me some nice competition there. Fairy Tapping helps Bulu, but it does miss out on Knockoff and U Turn, but it does gain close combat and player up this generation. So yeah, no, that's a lot of things to take in, a lot of interesting stuff to so we'll wait and see. And Lele with Expanding Force, just forget about it. I mean, it's going to be really good if not broken. I mean, it could 2 a kill Chansey for Christ's sake. So yeah, Coco with um, Rising Voltage as well. No, super strong. Um, just go through some new moves. Um, there's also a Thunder Cage, which I guess the move traps the opponent, so it's like a, a electric type block. Dragon Energy, the lower it uses HP, the more it's power, so it's kind of like a flail, I guess. Um, freezing Glare, psychic type move. The Pokemon's attacked by firing psychic power from both eyes. They also may leave the attack frozen, or the target frozen, which is cool. Um, if Thunderous Kick, the Pokemon overwhelms the target with lightning like movement before delivering a kick that also um, lowers the defensive stat of the target. And then last, but certainly not least, Fiery Wrath, a dark type move. The Pokemon transforms its wrath into a fire like or to attack. It may also make Pokemon flinch. So we have kind of a utility trapping move in Thunder Cage. 
Dragon Energy, which kind of like seems like a flail equivalent, if you will, for Dragon types, which is interesting. And then three seemingly strong attacking moves. I'm not yet sure um, if the target lightning like before Jolivan Kick makes Thunderous Kick a two turn move or what. We'll have to wait and see. If you guys know any more on these moves, let me know in the comments below. And in general, just be sure to leave a comment, guys. I love hearing from you guys. I'll be sure to respond to as many comments as I can. But yeah, no, these moves be sure to shake up not only in game but also competitively. So that's really cool. I also want to just shift to the competitive po the, the, sorry, the Pokemon official website really quick. There's so many cool things. Like, look, Galarian Slow King looks like me after I get critical hit in the game. Look at that. It's like they got the, the sad boomer face that's like all crusted up and shit. That's basically me, honestly. But yeah, no, it's, it's the label the Expert Pokemon. Expert Pokemon. It's Poison Psychic. Yeah. Um, curious Medicine. So it'll be interesting to see what that has to do. Um, there's some information on it here. Now, I don't want to spoil everything for you guys. So definitely a massive spoiler warning. If you're looking at this, I'm not going to go through it all. But one thing I want to go through is Eerie Spell, the signature move. It's a Psychic type move. In which Pokemon's attack with tremendous psychic power if it hits. Um, the opponent doesn't only take damage, but also loses 3 PP. So it's kind of like a combination of spite and an actual attacking move, which can go a long way in my eyes. That's a super practical tool, especially for competitive Pokemon. So yeah, um, as to the ability, um, which was the last thing I'll spoil on it, when a Pokemon enters, um, the ally stats changes are set. So it's basically like unaware. So it does lose a generator, but it can be a stallier option, and lower tiers are going to be very interesting as well. So, yeah, um, there's also a whole slew of other things. We already know about Tubfu or Shifu and Yantamax, but let's go ahead and click on one, two more of these, I guess. Um, Calyrex real quick. Um, yeah, you encounter this. It's, you'll uh, find, yeah, it's um, got the ability Unnerve. It's very small. It's like a grass Pokemon. It's labeled the King Pokemon. And, yeah, I mean, look, it's got kind of this badass, like, buff look to it. And it's got, like, the, the Rotten Tomato on its head. So, yeah, interesting. A Noble Leader, Pokemon Rule, Galar. In ancient times. Oh, that's very interesting. Okay, so there's some lore behind it. And um, they don't give us much more information. It's fine. Um, we know about these three, of course, these guys. Um, all right, let's look at Reggie Leaky and Reggie Rado and then the Galarian Birds. And we'll get going with that. Um, so it's an electric type Pokemon, of course. It makes sense. And Transistor is the ability. Um, does give us much on Transistor. Um, Thunder Cage is a signature move, so it's the trapping move. Um, yeah. Is it? Yeah, trapping opponents below in a cage of lightning. All right, that's pretty funny. Um, yeah, so that's cool. I'm not going to get into it again. I don't want to spoil way too much, but if you guys want me to extend my thoughts on these Pokemon again, leave a like, and I'll be sure to do that. We also have Regirado, um, Dragonair Pokemon, Dragon's Maw. So he kind of does get the Maw out there. Maw, you know, uh, you kind of get that, get that vibe from it. Yeah, all right. Um, so much Dragon Energy. It's a signature move of Regirado. Okay, that makes sense. So it's kind of like the Flail. I wonder if they'll have, like, an ability to set up with that. Maybe, like, Salix set, so you bring it all the way down, and then you, like, use that move, and it's just super strong. And the Galarian Birds. I know Joey did something about this in his channel, Pokemon MVs. Be sure to check him out. But competitive in Articuno, probably a bit of a uh, downgrade from Patrick. Truth be told, hey, if it ever switches in like a Moonblast, you don't know. Freezing Glare is its signature move that makes a ton of sense. It's actually a physical, a psychic type special move. Okay, yeah, and it's gonna be, um, oh yeah, it's gonna be psychic flying. Oh, that's very cool. Okay, so Articuno getting what might be an improvement both offensively and defensively. Let's wait and see. Galarian Zapdos, I believe it's going to be a fighter, yeah, it's fighting flying, so it's going to be cool against Defiant, so it's going to be great against Defog. Thunderous Kick is its signature move, fighting type move, it's going to do a lot of damage to lower the defense stats, that's super cool as well. And then look, look at this, oh my god, you can, you cannot not appreciate that, it's such a badass Pokemon already, you can tell. And last, but certainly not least, we also have Galarian Moltres, it's dark flying, and it, oh my god, just the flames of fury. It looks absolutely beautiful. I love this already. Oh my goodness. Fiery Wrath is going to be its signature move. Makes Pokemon flinch. Probably going to be a strong attack as well. And yeah, I mean, just love this official art. So thank you so much to Game Freak and Pokemon for coming out with all this. Be sure to check them out, of course. And um, thank you guys so much for watching. Be sure to like, comment, subscribe. Let me know your favorite Pokemon that are being released. Let me know your thoughts on the forums. The release date is going to be in October. Yeah, right now this says Fall 2020, but it's going to soon be October. Be Dynamax Adventures and so much more. But yeah, no, let me know your thoughts on that below. Be sure to have a great day, guys. And yeah, so much hype coming up. Free to do this. Be sure to like, comment, subscribe, check out Jambed's book, etc. And have a great day. All right, peace out, guys. Thanks again for watching. And uh, bye. Yeah, okay, peace.